Hey y'all, what's going on? John Welch, Freeborn Fitness Nation. And today we're talking about the air element. Uh, most of you are likely familiar. We have four elements that make up matter and the human body is right there with it. We've got fire and water and air and earth. The methodology that we're going to get into is going to break our workout components into each of these four elements. Uh, the earth element, we're going to do core progressionary lifts. These are standard basic strength developing lifts, lifts that are designed to be sympathetic in nature. So they're going to be intense, they're going to be strong, it's going to be hard work. Uh, and then we're going to cycle into a parasympathetic phase, the water element, which is gonna get into um, fascia and how fascia inter intertwines throughout the entire body and what are we doing with fascia? And, 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 and how does fascia help our skin suit work better and get everything to perform better and to feel better? Then we're gonna uh, peek it out on another sympathetic phase, a, an intense fire elemental phase where we're going to get into some explosive endurance work. Uh, and then and then here today is the air cycle, the air elemental cycle, uh, which is the respiration system of the body and the intrinsic muscular system of the body. Uh, you know, really, <laughs> And my, and my friend, uh, Joseph Schwartz, he, he created these charts. You can see them up on my, my wall here. Um, I wanted to zoom in on, on, on this one here a bit for you. Uh, this is the intrinsic muscular system, which covers muscles that stem from the, the this cranium through the neck and all these muscles that intertwine deep into the neck and the muscles that drive down into the into the lung region and the rib cage and the diaphragm muscle down all the way into the pelvic floor. Now this system is responsible for you know, breathing and it's also responsible for stabilizing the entire body. In my, in my clinical practice for almost 20 years now doing this clinically and the, uh, you know, but before that, you know, growing up in pain as a kid, I learned that to the degree I was keeping my body stable and my spine, you know, capable, I felt better. Uh, so, you know, we've got a six week cycle here for the intrinsic muscle system. Uh, we're going to focus on a, on a six, you know, on a seven day week. That means we're gonna put about uh, four days uh, into what I would refer to as a working in capacity, where we're gonna work at a, um, a parasympathetic, uh, lighter, um, you know, very, very um, conscious, you know, training methodology to stabilize and heighten that intrinsic muscular system. Uh, so we're going to be more capable of performing better and feeling better as we move forward. And then two days of the week uh, for this for the six week phase, we're going to get into some intense workouts. So um, that's how we're going to balance this thing out. When we're looking at the fire cycle, we're going to have five intense workouts um, in a week and in one parasympathetic workout. Oh, every week has has a day off. So I choose Sunday as the day off. That's Sunday is fun day. Go out and have some fun, do some fun things. Um, so day one, the air element. What does that mean for us? Uh, as I've met people over the years, people have issues with breathing. As a rule, it almost seems like uh, the majority of the people who walk into my office, they end up having challenges with proper breathing mechanics. So that is the very first place that I'll start with people. And what we're gonna learn today, these techniques are really gonna be techniques that have become daily practices. Um, you know, when you're in bed, you're gonna do some of these things uh, as you're going to sleep. When you are, um, you know, getting ready to work out, you know, you might do a couple of these things just to start your workout. 
Uh, you're gonna notice these things and observe these things in yourself all day long because you breathe 24,000 times a day, roughly. You're gonna inhale and exhale, and we need the respiration system to be working properly. And, uh, you know, and there's some, some, you know, interesting exercises that we can do, you know, even, even, uh, you know, a number of tongue exercises because, because the tongue has eight muscles for extrinsic, for intrinsic, and, and these muscles are all part of it. Literally all of these muscles through the face and the cranium and then in through the neck and the scalenes and all these intercostal muscles in the rib cage. We need to be on top of these things. And uh, I'm gonna go over a, a, a couple of the primary things right now. So let's do this thing. The first thing we wanna do is work on our totem pole capacity, right? So the totem pole, right? If you can, if you can picture a totem pole, it's this very straight, you know, vertical column and it's got really cool imagery on there and every part of the totem pole represents something different and, and really so that you know my totem pole and your totem pole every part of me represents something different you know from the the sixth chakra in the head to the fifth chakra in the neck the fourth chakra in the heart we've got the third chakra with the gut the second chakra with this with the pelvis and then the first chakra with the lower extremities. So really we are a total pole. And one of the things that we want to be able to accomplish here is we want to get our spine to begin to integrate with our pelvis. Right? So, uh, so really from the shoulder complex down into the pelvic structure. And, 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 and the spine is the thing, right? This is the thing that we're, we need to be on top of right away. Where's my range of motion? I can even feel right now, I, I, just, I just started with a new pillow. It's not quite working as well as my last pillow. Uh, I've got some kinks in my right rib cage back in here. Um, so this is the progression. Let's do this thing. A good first place to start is to literally lie down on your back and do a check-in, right? Like, where do I feel like I am in a state of uh, discourse? You know, I, I was even noticing last night, I, I was beginning to sleep and, and my head didn't want to stay in a straight alignment on the pillow if it, it wants to turn off. And in part, I know this of myself because I can hear out of this ear well, but I cannot hear out of my left ear very well. So I get into a habit of rotating my head to cover this ear, right? And so it gets quiet, but that's gonna start to mess up my totem pole. It's gonna start to mess up this intrinsic system. So I'm gonna lie down flat on my back. I'm gonna do a little check-in. I'm gonna figure out where am I at? You know, do, do my feet wanna roll out? I'm feeling like this is pretty good. My, my feet are trying to roll out a bit. Um, I imagine by the time we're done, I'm gonna find that my feet are gonna be more squared up uh, because I just know this of myself. Um, and as I relax a little bit more, I can feel this right foot is dropping out even a little bit more as I allow myself to relax. Um, feel like my ribs are into the floor pretty decently well. Gonna do a little breathing here, do a check-in on the breathing. It's pretty good, but I think it's gonna get better. So first exercise right here, here we go. I'm gonna bend the knees, put the feet on the floor. And take my hands, come to the top of my head, and I'm going to tuck my chin while I pull my head this way. All right? See that? I gave myself a little chin tuck. What that chin tuck is going to do is it's going to help me to decompress my cervical spine and add some length. When I did that little chin tuck, I could also tell that I postured up just a little bit through my lower back. And, you know, as you practice these things, 
you'll notice more and more self observations as you're going. But so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the head with the hands. I'm going to put the tongue to the roof of my mouth. So swallow. Notice how your tongue goes to the roof of your mouth. That's where we want the tongue right now. So I'm gonna swallow the tongue to the roof of the mouth. I'm gonna tuck my chin and I'm gonna move my body this way. All right, so it's gonna look like this. So kind of get a gauge, where's my head now? All right, I'm right near the edge of this, this uh, yoga mat. So let's see what happens. I'm gonna move this way. And then tuck the chin. And I'm really looking to get my head as far that way. Now I'm gonna you know, keep this anchored and I'm gonna like really wiggle my hips a little bit and I'm trying to reach my hips as far that way as possible and place it on the floor. Now I am not going to eliminate my low back curve. And, and actually what I'm looking for is a curve at the neck that matches the curve at the, at the, at the low back at the belly button. Okay, so the middle of the neck in the middle of the lumbar spine, which is where the belly button is at. And, you know, I can even slide my hand under there and find that I'm probably going to have about the same width of my hand, right, up to about the knuckles. That's how far I want the spine off. So again, I'm going to repeat that, right? I'm going to grab the head, slide this way, and what I'm going to observe, right, I'm going to wiggle the hips, reach that way, plant the pelvis. When I slide this way, the skin on my upper back gets pulled down my back. This is what we do not want, right? I see people do this. They go to make the move, they go this way, and then they sort of walk their shoulders. And no walking the shoulders. That is not the deal. The deal is this. I'm gonna slide and the skin under my upper back is gonna get pulled down my back. Boop, skin has gotten pulled, right? It can't go any farther. I'm not walking my shoulders, tucking my chin, kind of reaching the hips that way, and I'm gonna plant the hips. Even this position right here is giving my intrinsic muscular system activation. This alone is going to start to become effective in activating that, that muscular system. I'm going to take a couple breaths in here. For the sake of the video, I'm going to breathe through my mouth a little bit. And I'm going to breathe through my nose a little bit. Uh, if, I, if I'm not making a video, I'm likely strictly breathing through my nose. And the mechanic of a breath is, is key in what we're going to cover next in the progression. So as I take my inhale, let me take an inhale right here. The stomach is the first thing that needs to move. The chest will finish it. Okay, so we have the chest rising at the end. So the, the start of the inhale the stomach is expanding out. I can even feel I've got a couple, I've got goosebumps going on from just taking a couple breaths and activating that chain. Because when I activate that chain, I'm opening up literally all the blood flow to the head. The vagus nerve opens up. I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty amazing what these little tiny micro movements can do. And uh, so, okay, so when we breathe, we've got. Um, the diaphragm expanding at the beginning. Most people's diaphragms are not super duper involved. Uh, 
you know, because if I'm, if I am in a state uh, of, of, let's say, fight or flight, and a lot of people are sort of working and, in, 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 you know, leading their lives in a state of fight or flight, there's a lot of stress involved in life, and there's a lot to do, there's a lot of expectations in life, so people will commonly have this um, the stress. I have stress too, we all do, but when, when we get into fight or flight, what happens is it gets, the it, we tend to get into this like big chesty breath, like we're up, we're up here, you know, people are breathing. I gotta almost force myself to do it, right? They're sort of, they, start, they get into this like, as soon as they inhale, their chest is lifting. So if you look in the mirror and if the first thing you see as you begin an inhale is if you see your chest lifting up, that's a faulty breathing pattern. That is number one. That is number one. That has to be number one when it comes to exercise. If, if you are going into other progressionary exercise patterns with a faulty mechanic in your, in your, in your breathing pattern, you know, pattern and you know, in your intrinsic muscular system, it's gonna be offline. It's just, you know, the cranium muscles, the neck muscles, the rib cage muscles, the diaphragm of the, of, of the thoracic spine, the diaphragm of the pelvis, the pelvic floor muscles, the, you know, the transversus abdominis, the multifidus muscles that, 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 you know, go up and down your spine, they're not gonna be online. They're not gonna work right. They're gonna be short in, in, their, in their, you know, responsibilities. So what we wanna see as we begin an inhale, if you watch my shoulder line, The chest comes up at the last part of the inhale. Do these with me, come on now. And so on the beginning of that, the stomach is opening up. The stomach is opening up because the diaphragm muscle is driving down, right? The diaphragm muscle is driving down into the organs. That drive down into the organs is what's gonna stimulate the organs. The organs need to move. The organs, every single breath we take, the organs are going to move like the liver, you know, flips like this on the inhale and it flips back on the exhale. The, you know, the stomach does this, the, you know, the guts do this. You know, we have a predominant amount of our, of our lymph system is located under the diaphragm. So when the diaphragm muscles working within our respiration, it pumps the lymph. The lymph is the garbage disposal of the body. So it's pulling out wastes and toxins from the cells and helping us you know, get rid of these toxins through peeing and pooping and breathing and sweating. This is, this is mission critical. Breathing is mission critical. The now the beautiful part is this. We breathe nonstop. We are breathing all the time in life. We're breathing every day. We're breathing every moment of every day literally 24, 25,000 inhales and exhales a day. So you have opportunities to work on this. Depending on my body positioning, I'm gonna see different capacities to breathe. Right? I could be sitting in a chair breathing. I could be um, on my, my hands and knees. Right? I could be on my hands and knees and then work on breathing. Flat on my back, on my stomach, on my side. Now on my side is one of my favorite ways to breathe. On my side, kind of the fetal position in bed at night, right? My, my knees are tucked up a little bit. I'm in this sort of, you know, little bit of a rounded spine, you know, sleeping position. That sleeping position I find is one of the best ways to learn how to breathe properly. Because it's sort of, taking away the 
the muscular tension of all the other muscles in the body so I can really just isolate those respiratory intrinsic muscles in the body. So quick recap, day one, here we go, we're on our back, we're going to tuck the chin, tongue to the roof of the mouth, slide this way, plant the head, get the hips as far that way as possible, and then from this pose here, We've got a ton of different exercises that we're going to work on. This move right here can be done in bed when you first are going to sleep at night. Maybe you do some deep breathing. Maybe you wake up in the morning, middle of the night, go into some deep breathing. This is a, this is a position you could replicate. And, uh, and then we're working on the proper breathing mechanics. So this is where it all starts with the air element, the air cycle of fitness. We've got six weeks to dive deeper into this stuff. Keep being amazing.